good morning, happy Sunday. So good to see you guys this morning. Uh, welcome back to our series. We have the last couple of weeks been in a series called Shelter in Place. Probably sounds familiar, right? We have been talking about different ways that people throughout the Bible have had to shelter in place what they learned about themselves and what we can learn about God in their stories. We are continuing in that series, in this series, and we're gonna be looking at this dude named Jonah. Jonah. Jonah is a story about how sometimes we need to have an attitude check as we shelter in place. Kind of a tough one for us to think about and to realize, but a really important one. I can see your parents shaking their heads about checking attitudes. We're gonna be looking at that at the, in Jonah's story. And as we do, uh, as we do always, let's jump in with prayer. Lord, we thank you that your Bible is filled with stories of not only how you are present and faithful, but also stories that remind us to reflect on how we're thinking and how we're acting and how we're serving those around us. Lord, just let us hear from you today. Let us be reminded in this story about what it looks like for us to be faithful and to shelter in place um, with good and hopeful attitudes, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. All right grab some. I'm okay. Uh, so like I said, we are jumping into the story of Jonah today. And a lot of us probably have heard of Jonah. He's kind of a familiar name. Uh, and we're going to be looking at how Jonah sheltered in place and what he learned. Jonah is a book in the Old Testament. So we're still in the Old Testament. Next week we'll be in the New Testament. It's a story, it's a book of the Bible in the Old Testament, and it's only a couple of chapters long. And this book and this story tells the story of this guy named Jonah. And Jonah has an amazing calling from God, but he has a bad attitude. And we see him walking through this season, and as he shelters in place, his attitude changes. We're gonna be learning from that today. So normally we go through when we like actually read a lot of the verses we've been doing that the last couple of weeks, but Jonah is quite a long book. I mean, it's four chapters, so not that long, but definitely too long to read. So we're gonna be talking about the first couple of chapters and highlighting some of the things that are happening and how that tells us this story of Jonah. So let's dive in. It's a whale joke. So in chapter one, we meet Jonah. And in verse one, we read right away that the Lord talks to Jonah. The word came of the Lord came to Jonah. And Jonah was told to go to this city of Nineveh and to preach in the city. Now we read that Nineveh was kind of a wicked city. Not only does Jonah tell us that, but in other parts of the Bible, we read how this city of Nineveh was known as a ruthless, bloodthirsty people and how the Israelites, Jonah's group, his community, hated Nineveh. But God loved Nineveh, and God knew that Nineveh could change. And so God tells Jonah, Jonah, you're going to go and help this city out. That was Jonah's call, to go to a group of people he didn't like, so that they could learn and experience God. And rather than Jonah being like, eh, not my first choice, but all right, we see in verse three of chapter one that Jonah runs away from the Lord. I love that the Bible is just like, yeah, and he ran. It makes me laugh. We see Jonah running, fleeing, going away from Nineveh. And part of his running away process was getting in a boat so that he could sail somewhere else. But God had a different idea. In verse four, we see that the, that the Lord sent a great wind on the sea and a violent storm arose. And over the next few verses, we see this storm getting worse and worse. And the people in the boat with Jonah are freaking out. And Jonah knows that this storm is because of him. And so in verse 12, we see Jonah saying, pick me up, throw me into the sea and it will be calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. At first, the people on the boat are like, oh, that's a little weird. We're going to try and throw a few other things overboard. And as they're throwing their cargo and their plates and their chickens overboard, nothing is happening. Their boat is still sinking. And so they decide to throw Jonah 
overseas, over into the crazy wind and rain and waves. And in chapter two, we see Jonah being swallowed by a fish. Most of us have heard this story. The Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Now you're like, Kylie, how how big is this fish? Or how small is Jonah? The real honest answer is I have no idea. Uh, sometimes the story of Jonah can be a little confusing to us, or it seems like it didn't happen. Jesus later talks about the story of Jonah. Uh, and so I trust that somehow Jonah was swallowed by a fish. Can't tell you how that happened, and that's okay. Sometimes we have to be faithful and read the Bible and take it for what it is. So Jonah is sheltering in place inside the belly of a whale. For three days, Jonah is in this fish. And we see Jonah shift and change his attitude. He knows that he was called to something and he was scared or he didn't want to do it. And he ran away. Ultimately, he knew that that was wrong. And so he changes and moves from disobedience and fear into obedience. And part of this changing of his attitude comes through this prayer. And I love the prayer that we read about in Jonah. Here's what Jonah says. In Jonah 2, he says this prayer. He says, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths into the very heart of the sea. And the currents swirled about me, all the waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me, seaweed was wrapped around my head, to the roots of the mountains I sank down, and the earth beneath me barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought me life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy mountains. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say, I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. Jonah is in the belly of his fish. He is in his shelter and place. And we see him walking through this attitude change. He starts this prayer by talking about how he is scared. He says, in my distress, I call out to God. I'm in this deep realm of the dead. And he recognizes that he is in the midst of something crazy and chaotic. And yet he knows that God is hearing him. He says, I'm in this despair, I'm in this pit, and yet you hear me. He says, I know that I had to go through all of this craziness, the wind, the rain, and yet you are present. And then he turns from sadness and questioning and scaredness to assurance. He says, when my life was ebbing and flowing, I remember you and you rose and I will now shout grateful joices and I will sacrifice to you. Jonah's story in these two chapters is a story of Jonah going from self-reliance to going to being scared in the belly to being a servant of God, to recognizing that God had a plan and he had a part. After this attitude shift that we see in this shelter in place, we read that the Lord commands the fish to spit out Jonah. And then in chapters 3 and in chapters 4 of the book of Jonah, Jonah goes to the city of Nineveh, and we see the city, not just individual people, but the city, accept God and change their ways. Jonah complains kind of a little bit in chapters 3 and 4, so it's not a full, you know, character change. But we see Jonah changing his attitude and leaning into what God had called him to do. And the kind of point where he decided to do that, the point where he changed was while he was sheltering in place. While he was stuck in the belly of a fish, probably very smelly, think about that. As he was stuck in his shelter in place, he recognized that he had done something wrong, that he had a bad attitude, that he had made bad choices. Uh, He recognized that God had been with him and saved him. And then he changed and he left the fish 
and did other things and chose the right thing and had a good attitude and had an attitude for God to serve God. Let's be real, friends. This shelter in place hasn't always been easy for us. Like you, I've gotten frustrated and annoyed and moody and upset. And sometimes my attitude has shaped the way I've approached things. I'm annoyed because I can't travel to see my friends and my family, so I say something mean to uh, my sibling, or I'm short with my parent on the, fo- on the phone. I'm annoyed because I don't like doing online Zoom meetings, so I sit on my phone on Instagram rather than being plugged into the meeting because that's easier. Don't tell my boss. I have made choices out of an emotion or out of my feelings that aren't always the best. Just like Jonah. Um, But what we see here in Jonah is that Jonah chose to lean into God. He chose to lean in in a way that changed his attitude. Even though his shelter in place wasn't easy, he recognized that God was calling him to do more. And so rather than lean into his temporary situation, he leaned into God's future. And that shifted the way he was thinking. When we get annoyed with our sibling because we've been in the same house with them for the last 10 weeks and all we want to do is some peace and quiet. When we get annoyed, we can shift our attitude. We can recognize that maybe our sibling needs help with something or maybe they need a little of attention or maybe they just need a little high five. And we can shift the way we treat others knowing that God is calling us to love people. When our Zoom class is super boring and we want to send a snarky message to a friend to get a laugh out of them about something the teacher had said or done, we can shift our action and our attitudes and praise our teacher or learn something new because we know that the teacher is doing the best that they can. Let's be real, when our parents are annoying us or when our sisters and siblings are are having uh, are annoying us or when we're just having a bad day, we can recognize that. And we can change our attitude because we know that God is calling us to serve our friends and our family and our community. That God wants us to love people and support people and be present with people just as God is loving and supporting us. Jonah is this story of changing and recognizing our attitudes while we shelter in place. When our nerves are on our end and when we're short with things, We can change our attitudes. We can focus and shift to looking the way that God is looking. And hopefully that means that we approach things with love and compassion and peace. So what does this story of Jonah actually tell us? Well, Jonah was called to do something big, something he wasn't excited for, and he fled. But ultimately Jonah knows that that was an issue, that that was his fault, and he repents and he changes. While we don't have the same big calling right now probably as Jonah, God is calling us in little ways to serve our friends and our family like we've been talking about, to love people, to offer up grace and hope and peace. God is calling us to plug into God, to plug into him, to be good students, to be faithful in our sports and to really try. And that's hard because sometimes our attitudes aren't great about stuff like that. Sometimes shelter in place makes us stressed and anxious and annoyed. But like Jonah, we're maybe called to think about that. It does mean we're going to have a good attitude 100% of the time, but maybe, maybe we can just shift it a little bit, change it a little bit, so that we're leaning into God rather than leaning into our situation. Jonah did that, and that's what we can learn from his story. What can we learn from God from this story? Well, The thing that I was thinking about with God is that in this story and in our lives, God does some pretty crazy things. In this story, God literally sent a giant fish to go swallow up and have Jonah forced shelter in place. And God probably isn't sending us giant fish. That'd be cool, but he isn't, probably. But God is sending us other things right? God is helping us and giving us other tasks and other callings and leading us to do some pretty cool things. And we miss those because sometimes our attitudes aren't good. But God wants us and is calling us to be faithful in this moment. Just like he was calling Jonah. 
And God called Jonah into things that were uncomfortable. And that's the second truth about God that we learn about in this story. God didn't say, hey, Jonah, uh, your really fun neighbor with the new PlayStation is sad. Go hang out with him. He was like, no, I'm going to send you to a group of people that you don't like. And I'm going to have you serve them. Uh, maybe God is calling you to go hang out with your friend with a PlayStation, which is awesome. But maybe God is calling you to something different. Maybe God is calling you or making you feel like you should reach out to a f somebody in your class you don't talk to who's kind of a loner. Or maybe God is calling you to serve your parents tonight. Or maybe you feel like God is wanting you to reach out to a cousin or a grandparent. And sometimes those can be uncomfortable things that God calls us to. But we know that ultimately we get to be a part of what God is doing here in this world. And that means reaching out of our comfort zone, even in the midst of our chaos of our situations. God calls and leads us to do things, pretty cool things. And sometimes those things make us feel uncomfortable, but we can trust that God is with us and that God is faithful. Jonah didn't trust at the beginning. He was scared and annoyed and angry, and he ultimately made a choice that wasn't the best. But as he changed his attitude, as he leaned into God, as he sheltered in place, he realized that God was calling him and leading him to do something really cool. And he changed his attitude and he prayed about it. And then he saved a city. Friends, as we shelter in place, as we continue in this season, some of us may need to have a bit of an attitude check. I need to have an attitude check at times. Sometimes we can lean into what we think we need and want and what we're feeling. And then we can forget that there's a world outside of us that needs love and patience and support. When we get so insular focused, when we only focus on our own selves and not on what God wants us to do or what God is leading us to do, we can get into emotional and uh, action states that aren't great. And, but we can turn from that. We don't have to be stuck in that. And we, like Jonah, can go through this attitude change where we're focused on what God wants us to do that day, that moment, that hour. And as we go and do what God is wanting us to do, as we spend time with God and with others, we can help make this shelter in place experience a little bit better. And we can find joy and peace and happiness rather than annoyance and anger and sadness. It's a pretty cool story, right? And it's a story that hopefully challenges us. We're going to be talking about this, obviously, in small groups, and I hope to see you guys there. But this week, as you experience your week, try and remember and lean into God. Try and see what God wants you to do. And remember that you can change your attitude while you shelter in place. That we don't always have to be stuck in one attitude, but we can help and love and serve those around us, even in small ways. That's what we learned from Jonah. We're gonna be finishing our Shelter in Place series next week, so I hope to see you back next Sunday. We'll see you guys during small groups. Have an awesome week.